Okay, so I have, <laughs> I did the big three low D whistles, and now I have the big four low D whistles. So I got a Copeland uh, a week, week and a half ago, and um, I played around with it a little bit, and it's a good whistle. Um, it's an excellent whistle, in fact. And I'm not sure, I'm deciding whether or not I want to keep it because it's kind of expensive. <coughs> Here's my Burke, low D, my MK Pro, and my Goldie. So my MK Pro is, is kind of my go-to low D whistle. Uh, I also use my Chieftain sometimes. Here's the Copeland. So Okay, so it's it's a very mellow sound. Uh, it's it's got a it's got a, a nice resonance going with it. It's not particularly like fine detail kind of. It reminds me a little bit of the Burke, uh, in that you can kind of lean into the bottom D. But if you take that same pressure and go up one note, it, you jump up, the E can't sustain that, that same level of pressure. What? Just thinking about things. So, yeah, your birthday's not for a, not for a while. 
It's coming up, but it's not yet. It's got a really nice second octave. Which has been my... It's... It's been my general experience with, with conical bore whistles that the second octave tends to be pretty nice. Uh, I kind of wish I had my Onyx still. I never anticipated getting a Copeland uh, before I sold my Shaw and my Onyx. Uh, so I couldn't, that was the one I wanted to add to my conical bore series, which I guess I could add a standalone video. So, my uh, my initial impression. I have to be careful on this on this E here, and you can big you can figure it out. Uh, but it's it's another whistle. Like my Burke is a whistle that sounds better if you push it t closer to the edge, but but you have to be careful because if you push it too much, it breaks. Obviously. Um, but if I if I don't blow hard on it, I go. Versus. When it's getting close to to breaking, it takes on this nice like resonant uh, character to it. That you don't quite get almost a like a wild tone. It's breezy today. Uh, so it, it, it's it's a whistle that you want to get familiar with. Unlike the Onyx, uh, it does have, it, it is stronger in the second octave. The, the Onyx in the second octave tended to, uh, to break even in the second octave. If you didn't hit it just right, or if you tongued it on this E note, it would, it would break into a weird harmonic thing, like that kind of thing. And there's still the danger of that, uh, just like there is with any whistle. But in particular, the, I feel like the, the Copeland manages it better than the, the Onyx does. See, I'm having to still be kind of careful of that low E. <coughs> so, coming from above, going down there, it'll break, and coming from below, coming up, it'll break. So, uh, again, that's not a that's not a a killer or anything it's just it's just getting familiar with the whistle
So <clears throat> take some familiarity. Uh, it's got a it's got a nice tone. Um, again, very mellow. Uh, and and the e what's the e break? So here's the Burke. So see, it does the same thing. But the low D is more powerful. So if I get a low D that's similar, it's it's a little bit stronger on. I can get the same low D uh, on my Burke that I can on the Copeland, but when I go up to the E, it doesn't break. So as long as I'm not, as long as I'm not pushing it as hard as it can be pushed, uh, but it it works out well when you land on that low D. It gives you you can kind of honk it. Go. So it has a little bit more, uh, it's, it's a more solid low D. Um, Uh, the, the Burke strikes me as a Copeland that um, went to the gym and started uh, doing protein shots and just it's just a, a beefier see in the way that they look that uh, 
the 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 Burke the Copeland is like a skinny Burke. <laughs> um, it, it's the the Burke just has a fat sound, and the Copeland has a more delicate sound, and it's a lovely tone. And it may just be that if I'm if you're not pushing it, if you're not expecting that big booming. expecting the big booming sound uh, it's 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 really nice it's kind of like a, uh, a, a like a slim down uh, Burke it's got the mellow round tone maybe a slightly more elegant uh, tone so here's the Colin Goldie low D medium blower this has much more back pressure than uh, either the Burke or the Copeland here it's nice and warm it's probably in the 80s maybe low 90s um, and the, the I'm not having any clogging issues really with the Goldie so this is the Goldie in all its glory things I really like about the Goldie because it has the back pressure uh, is you can really lean into it and so you have a lot of it feels like you have a lot of control over the uh, control over the dynamics uh, and just control over the whistle in general so last but not least here's my MK Pro this one has fewer clogging problems overall uh, the Burke is also pretty good
outside uh, when it's warm, I feel like uh, the Goldie performs uh, a little better than it normally does inside, and so I'm getting more resonance out of the Goldie, and but the, the MK tends to be a more reliable whistle, so reliability and in, in, like when you pick a whistle up, knowing how it's going to play, uh, it, it's, it becomes more important sometimes. <laughs> Uh, when you're picking something up and you just want it to play, uh, when whistles are less reliable and they tend to clog, uh, it tend, you tend to start, you have to think more about what you're doing and and rather than just enjoying the music, you're thinking, okay, is it, you're, you're monitoring the tone for when, when your whistle is going to fail you. So uh, there's something to be said for the reliability <coughs> of the MK. Uh, and that being said, even the MK clogs, uh, I was playing it last night, and I, it was really cold, and my whistle was really cold, or the air conditioning vent was blowing right on the, the whistle, so, uh, all whistles, whistles don't like the cold, they like, you know, warm, warm places, it just helps with moisture management. <laughs> also some control over the dynamics that you get with the Copeland uh, as long it feels like as long as I pull back and I'm not just constantly pushing it to the edge I have a little bit more headroom to kind of to sort of punch it a little bit on on some of the notes The, the Burke, I feel like I'm, I'm blowing it a little out of tune. So, 
tuning <coughs> it's affected by your breath pressure uh, and if you're pushing a whistle too hard sometimes you can you can blow it out of tune uh, so keep that in mind I think the Burks tuning is is very good uh, I think the tuning on all these whistles seems like it's pretty good um, so jumping from whistle to whistle with very different blowing requirements is a bit of a trick uh, but anyway I hope that gives you a, a, an interesting overview of four fantastic whistles each with their own special characteristics and the the low uh the copeland low d has been a a dream whistle of mine for a long time because <laughs> he, he needs to push him um because it's it's just they haven't been available and i've heard about them and so i finally got a chance to to try one out and so i think that's really cool because uh i i started whistling in 2010 and i from that time I heard about Copeland's uh, I've never seen one or held one until just recently so I uh, hope you found that interesting